Hello guys and welcome to episode 4 of my tutorial series. As you can see here, we're going to be talking about red power. Now red power is very good with uh, redstone, which I'm going to be talking about in the next couple episodes. But first, I'm going to explain how to make some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the alloys that you need to make uh, said uh, awesome redstone. And uh, and uh, I'm going to be mainly talking about its power system in this episode with red power. So let's get started. The very first thing that you want to you you uh, you want to create is an alloy furnace. And you can see there's a little bug with uh, red power. It shows its side here on the item frames, but uh, trust me, it'll it'll face you know different directions. So let's pop out the book here. Here's the recipe. You just need 32 clay, pretty much, to make this uh, alloy furnace. It's a pretty simple uh, thing. So let's go and get ourselves some of our bricks. Actually, I'm gonna actually gonna need to get regular clay here, as well for some of the other stuff that we're gonna need. Let's clear off this side of my inventory. Now the recipe for the uh, alloy furnace is just like said, just like so. Oh, oh well, there's your problem. I ch this is brick slab. I was wondering why it wasn't giving me regular bricks. Bricks. Oh, I did it again. Bricks. There we go. Now we have an alloy furnace. It's a pretty simple uh, machine. You can put it down here. It doesn't require any power. Or it runs straight off of coal. As you can see, like so. It's got this uh, 3x3 uh, crafting table and then a smelting thing right here. Now there's a lot of uh, recipes for uh, certain components that you're going to be needing. And the first one being the blue alloy ingot. And also, there's also another recipe in here. If you'd like to check a look, there's also wafers. Now, wafers goes and goes and are a. Uh, it's actually the silicone bowl that you cut up into wafers, and those are used for more advanced components. As you can see, the blue alloy ingot is one silver and four nickelite. Luckily, I got a bunch of this stuff with me, so I'm gonna go and get rid of these recipe books. Let's throw in, oh, I don't know, four nickelite and one silver. Just like so. As you can see, it starts to smelt. Now, the other way to make a silicon bull, see, there's a blue alloy ingot. Now, to make a silicon bull, you need to take eight coal and eight sand. It's like a bunch of carbon. Or more like silicon. Silicon and carbon. You get yourself one silicon bowl. Now this by itself isn't very useful. However, if we if we go and create a tool called a diamond handsaw, it allows us to cut up these bowls pretty much. And check the recipe for it. Now, there are other hand saws. But the diamond handsaw is the only one that can actually cut up the silicon bowl. Requires three sticks, two iron, and two diamonds. I did not grab any diamonds. But we only need two of them. Diamond. And it's made like so. Three sticks, two iron, and two diamonds. Get ourselves a diamond handsaw. Nice. Now, it's not a one-time use, but you have to put it in a crafting table with whatever you're going to be cutting up, like this silicon bowl. As you can see, we got ourselves 16 silicon wafers. The diamond handsaw took one durability of damage, but, you know, it's useful for I don't know how many times. And as you can see, there's many other handsaws. You've got an iron one, a green sapphire, ruby, and, and sapphire uh, handsaws. 
But the diamond handsaw is the only one that can cut uh, silicon bulls. Now what you do with these bulls for certain other components is that you combine them with four more nickelite. Don't worry, you get a lot of nickelite with red power. Especially if you dig uh, closer to where redstone is, you'll find a lot of this stuff. As you can see, four nickelite and one silicon wafer get you a blue doped wafer. Nice. Now you might be wondering, you know, what what are all these components for? Well, I'm going to be talking about them with, with uh, these. Now, now I'm going to skip these two and go straight to this battery box right here. This battery box will uh, go and store power uh, in the form of blutricity. So if we go and look at the recipe. Oh, a laggy there. Get rid of that and that. Battery box. Requires one blue alloy ingot, three iron ingots, one wooden plank of any type, and four batteries. And those batteries, and that battery uh, crafting recipe is like this. Six nickelite, two copper, and one tin. And that's just about... To make one battery box, you're going to need one silver, three iron, one wooden plank, 28 nickelite, four tin, and eight copper. So it's sort of expensive with its nickelite. Look at that, 28. Trust me, there are some more that uh, requires a lot more. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get myself a handful of blue alloy ingots. Since you already know how to craft them. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to make myself four batteries. Just like so. You need two copper and only one tin. You get yourself some batteries. Nice. We're going to need four of them. Like so. And I do not have any wooden planks. I thought I had some. Wooden plank. Our iron. Oh, I thought that that was the recipe. I'm going to have to check it. Because I thought that that was it. Yep, that's it. Did I... Did I... Yes, I got slabs. Heh. <laughs> oh, didn't want those. Where are you, wooden planks? How about oak planks? I think that's... yeah. Oak wooden... wood planks. There we go. There we go. Now we have ourselves a battery box. Now this will hold a charge for us in the form of blutricity. Bam. If you right click, it's got a... you might say it's a little bit complicated, but it's not. This right here is how much charge it has, and this is how much uh, current is flowing through the system. Usually it'll flow up, it'll fill up this one up until green, and then it'll start uh, pulling in all the its excess energy. Then you can uh, charge and discharge batteries with, with these two slots, which is pretty neat. So now we've got a storage device for uh, Blutricity. How are we going to get it? Well, there, there are three types of uh, things that you can make. Unfortunately, one of those requires some more advanced uh, tools, and I'll be getting into that one, you know, later. It's called the Kinetic Generator, but be expecting more on that in a future episode. Now, the two earlier ones that you can get is a solar panel and a thermopile. Now, thermopiles are pretty easy to make, so I'm going to show you that one. And the good thing about thermopiles is that they can work anywhere. Solar panels have to be, you know, directly, you know, where the sun is shining, pretty much. Let's first talk about the thermopile. Oh. Go and get rid of this stuff here that I don't need. So we're going to need 
Two blue doped wafers, one blue alloy ingot, four copper, and two iron, which is about 12 nickelite, one silver, one sand, one coal, four copper, and two iron. Just about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself more blue doped wafers, because I'm going to be needing a lot of them. Like so. Got ourselves some blue doped wafers. And our blue alloy ingots, let's craft it. It's made like so. Take your blue alloy ingot like that. Your blue doped wafers like that. I think I'm doing this right. Uh, now I'm going to have to look at the recipe. <laughs> ah, that's close. I was on, on, the, on the right track. There we go. We have ourselves a thermal pile. Now it generates its energy with water and lava. So by itself, it it's not going to do much. Okay, so we get ourselves a pick, pickaxe. Let's go and store it. Well, I don't know, underneath here. Now a thermal pile will generate its energy from you know water and lava. Usually to set up a thermal pile, you usually have to have one lava source next to it, and all the other source and all the other uh, sides need to be water, except for the one that you want to output the energy from. In this case, I'm going to put my lava right there, water, 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 and then my thermal pile right up there. So I'm actually going to need to get myself some a lava source. Like so. Water sources. First, I'm going to put my thermal pile. Right, like so. That way, we don't lose the lava. Water, 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 water. And soon, you'll start seeing a little bit of charge. To, so we'll start building up in this battery box. And we'll come back to it later to show you how much, you know, one thermal pile will charge. Next, I'm going to be talking about a solar panel. Wait, always press the always right, always left click instead of right click. So let's go into its recipe. It requires bl eight blue doped wafers and one blue alloy ingot. So that's about four sand and four coal. Actually, that's about half of that. It's actually about... Yeah, four sand and four coal. One silver and 36 nickelite. It's a lot of nickelite for one solar panel. And its recipe is just like so. Eight blue doped wafers and one of those. Get you one, get you one solar panel. Let me also get another battery box, so I can show you how fast it charges, compared to uh, the thermal pile. You'll put our battery box like so, solar panel right next to it, and then it, will, it too will start to charge. Oh, you can see the thermal pile is just slowly getting in there. Like I said first, this thing will distribute uh, power through its systems. And it'll first charge up this one before it'll charge up its excess. As you can see, the solar panel is already there. It's actually past it already. So you can see solar panels generate more. Generate more power over time. Or it generates power faster. Oh yeah, then I can also show you a how you can discharge and charge batteries. First I'm going to put more power into this system. I'll show you how to discharge a battery. Put it here in the bottom. As you can see, it filled up its uh, internal storage here. And uh, this right here is the bar where it starts charging. So if you put it in if you put a battery in here, it'll charge up the battery box like so. If you put it in the top, it'll take out charge. 
Charge and discharging. The neat thing about these battery boxes is that if you break them, they keep their charge. However, they will lose this, this charge. So whenever you pick them up, they'll keep the excess charge right here, but they will lose all of this charge, which is the power being distributed through the system. And this system is only one solar panel and one uh, battery box. Man, that's really slow. And the neat thing about s solar panels is that if you put them right next to each other, they'll carry their current through the wire. So, if I were to go and discharge this battery box... Whoop. I accidentally sorted my inventory. I'm going to break this and put down a new one. If I go and put more solar panels like so, it'll actually carry its charge from this solar panel all the way to this battery box. So as you can see, it's charging much faster now because there's more solar panels. Neat, eh? So what happens if you want to get, you know... Hmm. I have to get rid of one of these uh, thermal pile sources. It'll still generate power, it just won't generate as much power now, now that I got rid, rid of this source. Let's say if you want to bring uh, power from this battery box to this battery box, and have it be distributed amongst these two battery boxes. Well, there is a way to do that. First, I'm going to need to clear out all this first. Get rid of some of this nickelite that I don't need. And this stuff. You can actually create a blue blue electric wire. Right here. Blue alloy wire. Wait. Let's look at this recipe. Now this blue alloy wire will make 12 blue alloy wires. So you agree, you're going to need 3 blue alloy ingots and 6 wool. That's about 3 silver, 12 nickelite, and 6 wool. So if we go and put our blue alloy ingot in a crafting recipe like so, and our wool all on the sides, acting as pretty much insulation, we get ourselves a blue alloy wire. Neat. Now the, now the blue alloy wire is pretty neat. It has a really interesting mechanic. Let's say if you wanted to... I don't know. Let's say you've got solar panels up over here. Right up here, for no particular reason. I'm just going to leave those there. The only thing about this wire, though, is... Oh, I'm actually going to need to yeah, have something like this. So you can put it on the sides of things. So if I wanted to put it like so, and like so, we can make it run any way we want. You can actually put it here on the ceiling if we wanted to. Now these two solar panels that I just put up here are now connected through this wire to this battery box. So if I were to break this solar panel, as you can see these two aren't connected anymore, we're still gaining charge. Although of course, you know, not as fast because there's not as many solar panels here now. But you'll see that uh, we'll soon get uh, enough charge. However, if I put a wire right here, we should start getting a lot more charge. You can see it moved up a little bit. And we can actually run this wire to this battery box. As you can see, it's going to start draining because it's going to be sending an equal amount of power to over here. Now that this one's, for, now this one's green and this one's uh, green, any excess will go first to the nearest one, and then it'll go to this one, once this one is full. Neat, eh? Oh, dang. Look at that. We've already got some complex stuff already going on. So, 
I showed you the basics of how to get some blue electric power going on in your base, let's say. Now, what what can you use it on? Well, there are some couple of machines that you can make. First one, these two being the blue electric furnace and the blue electric alloy furnace. You remember this furnace right here, which is used to make the alloy ingots and then the blue doped wafers. Well, this blue electric alloy furnace runs off of blutricity. I'm going to grab both of them. Clean out my inventory a little bit. Okay, so let's first make the blue electric alloy furnace. You're going to need 20 clay, smelted, which means to turn them into bricks two iron and one blue alloy ingot. So that's about 20 clay, two iron, one silver, and four nikolai. Not a complex recipe at all. Pretty much take your bricks like so. And instead of filling out three more bricks down here, you take two iron and one blue alloy ingot. Usually whenever you see a machine that requires a blue alloy ingot, mean means that it's dealing with power pretty much. So if I go and put my blue electric furnace, let's say somewhere along this line, let's say right here. As you can see, it got connected, and as you can see, it's getting power. So now it's all powered up, thanks to this battery box and this battery box, getting power from all these solar panels. Oh, as you can see, it goes and distributes power evenly throughout the system. So it might take a little bit for the power to, you know, it'll fluctuate. But once you've got it in a, once you wait, once you uh, give it a few uh, seconds or so, it'll it'll stop fluctuating. But now it should be able to. Uh, you should be able to. Uh, you know, smell things right now. I'm gonna go and put down this battery box as well, right there. So we'll have even more charge. So this uh, this one functions just like this alloy furnace. If we go and throw in silver, and some nickelite that I got rid of. As you can see, it smelts much faster than the other one. But as you can see, it's going to be draining power. There's a blue alloy ingot. Let's say if we've got some wafers. Put that in there. We'll get some coal and sand. It'll function just like, you know, the regular alloy furnace, except this one doesn't require coal to uh, keep it powered. Pretty neat, eh? Next one is a blue electric furnace. Just made like so. 20 clay, 2 iron ingots, and 1 blue alloy ingot. Now, th now these clay you don't smell. You just keep them as clay. So it's pretty much ex almost the exact same recipe. Except you get your clay blocks here. If you put four clay in a crafting table, you'll get, you know, clay. If you put it like so, just like the other recipe. To iron here on the bottom, and then one blue blue alloy ingot, we get ourselves a blue electric furnace. Uh -huh. Go and put that here on the system. Aha! Uh -huh. Got power. It's going to fluctuate for a little bit, but this one acts just like a regular furnace. Let's go and get ourselves some iron ore, let's say. Throw that in there. As you can see, it's much faster than a regular furnace, and it, re and it requires blue electric furnace. Or it requires blue tr blutricity. But as you can see, it doesn't double, you know, your output. However, if you go and put, you know, dust in here, uh, iron dust, where are you? Or pulverized iron. That should all still work. It acts just like any other furnace. So if you go and pulverize it first, you can use blut blutricity to go and smelt it, if you really wanted to. Well, 
Well, that's pretty much Red Power's power system, practically. In a nutshell. There are a few other things that you can build. Like a voltmeter. Voltmeter. And some voltage transformers, but I'll get into those more later with the advanced power uh, tutorial. This is kind of like, you know, the basics of power and, and red power. So, I think that's a good way to wrap up this episode. So, I am Lunchbox, adios, and good night.